Welcome back everyone. Today we're working on a Suzuki DR200 and it's got low compression so I figured this would be a great example of where a compression tester comes in handy and the differences between a standard compression tester like this and a cylinder leak down tester like this. They both have their pros and cons and really you need both and I'll show you why. So we're going to start with the standard automotive style compression tester here. These are pretty easy to use. All you do is remove the spark plug and screw this into the spark plug hole with the appropriate adapter if necessary, and then hold the throttle open and crank it. And what this will do is this will show the total amount of pressure the cylinder can create held in here with a Schrader valve, a check valve basically. In a lot of repair manuals, you'll find a specification for minimum and maximum compression values. So on the Suzuki DR200, the minimum is 139, the maximum is 199. This one is just below minimum, just below 140 PSI. Uh, so it's got low compression. But let me go ahead and demonstrate how this works. As I mentioned, we have this screwed into the spark plug hole. All we gotta do on this bike here, hold the throttle all the way open and hit the start. And then we can see, yeah, it's low compression. They're a fast and easy way to diagnose and find a low compression cylinder. So if you have a single cylinder engine like this, great, you, you know that this is the only one that's got low compression, doesn't really help you. But if you have, say, an eight cylinder engine, you can put this in all eight spark plug holes really quickly and find if you have one or two uh, low compression cylinders and then go from there. And then the next tool, the leak down tester, is really going to help with diagnosing where the issue lies. Okay, so now that we understand we've got low compression, we need to start figuring out why it has low compression so we know what to fix or where to start looking for something to fix. And that's where the leak down tester comes in handy. It's a regulator connected to an air output with another T, and in here there is a small orifice, so about 40 thousandths of an inch drilled hole. What we're going to do is we're going to apply air pressure through the regulator, through that orifice, and into the cylinder. And what this is going to tell us is that if we're putting 80 psi into the cylinder, how much is the cylinder holding? Can it hold 80 PSI? This is not quite as easy to use as the other compression tester for the simple fact that you need an air compressor. You need a steady source of air blowing into this to be able to diagnose where the issue is. The engine also has to be at top dead center on the power stroke for the cylinder that you're testing. This engine is a single cylinder, so that's pretty easy. All you gotta do is put on top dead center for number one, and then you gotta lock it in place. For this, it's easy because we can put it in gear, so then the bike just won't roll and it's held in place. On a vehicle with an automatic, you're gonna have to hold the crank with a breaker bar. Otherwise, the crank is gonna spin once you put air pressure in the cylinder and push the piston down, and then your test is worthless. So let's go ahead and do the leak down test. So like the compression tester, you use a hose that goes into the spark plug hole with the appropriate adapter if necessary, and then hook up some air to this side. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to open up the regulator. What we're gonna do is put 80 PSI to, in the cylinder and see what it holds. And so this is cold, and as you can see, it holds about uh, 62, maybe 63 PSI. So this cylinder leaks a lot, which is no surprise given our previous test. I did do this warm earlier, I'm just showing it again. Warm, it's maybe 65 PSI, not a whole lot better, still needs some work done. So I've disconnected my microphone, I'm holding it in my hand so I can show you how useful this is as a diagnostic tool. I can hear air leaking out of not only the exhaust right here, but I also hear air leaking out of the intake. And if I open the throttle, you can hear a lot of air. So that means both intake and the exhaust valves are leaking, which is not a good situation. Okay, so the last place you could check for air leaking out of the cylinder is through the crankcase. And so it's either a valve cover, a breather, something like that. Here I've added a piece of fuel hose to the breather just to extend it so you can hear. And generally speaking, you're always going to have air coming out of the crankcase because you're going to have blow by and that's why it vents in the first place. So another place to check for cylinder leakage is the head gasket. And this could leak air to the outside of the engine entirely, or it could just leak into the slot for the cam chain which will come out through the crankcase breather and could be confused for blow by from the rings. So hypothetically, if we had say 75 out of 80 and all the leakage was out of the crankcase, I wouldn't be worried about it and this engine would probably run just fine. Uh, when you start getting below 70 out of 80 and you start getting more than say 10 to 15% cylinder leakage, that's when you run into issues. So this is a single cylinder bike, so any leakage past the intake valve is gonna cause issues with the carburetor and this bike doesn't want to idle. So ultimately we're gonna to have to tear into this bike and give it a top end refresh. You'll see that on a later episode. Let's say if you had a V8 engine and you had one cylinder that was low and leaking, it would probably run just fine and the other seven cylinders would mask this. You might notice that there'd be kind of an odd miss in the intake or something like that. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.